Hello, hello. All right. Welcome in, everybody, this morning. Or afternoon, actually, now. So let me get the audio levels balanced a little bit here. And we'll go ahead and get things ready on today's stream. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you, Brian Harmon. Thank you, PO17 and Ray Cerrone. Great to see you here. Ashley Nixon, thank you. Appreciate the love. And uh, I'm glad everybody could join me this morning. I'm, uh, or again, I keep saying this morning, it's already afternoon here. And I was sitting here, I was in my garage working on a new CRT. And I uh, thought I'd just share all this work with you guys as I was going on it. And today's CRT is kind of special because it's for uh, Try from My Life in Gaming. And I've already started shooting like a full official episode for it, but today we're gonna go through and we're gonna actually work on the chassis. <laughs> That's what I have here. And this chassis is uh, from a Toshiba television and it's the 24 inch AF45. And that's the flat screen version of the Toshiba. Uh, I already posted some pictures of that to Twitter. So if you want to get a sneak peek of what those look like, go check out my Twitter timeline for a sneak peek of that. Hey, Daniel Perez, glad to see you here. Hello, Triple X, Triple X, and Gimlod, Azucar. Thank you, everybody, for again showing up. We're going to work on this chassis. And what I'm really trying to do today is develop this custom cap kit for this thing. Um, and I, I wanted to show you how this process works. I've got a bunch of uh, cap kits that I've been going through and trying to do a better job of cataloging. If you go over uh, to my Patreon page, I have cap kits embedded within our specific private Discord server. And I've been periodically going through and adding new cap kits. I think we're over 50 sets that are at least have caps in there, cap kits in there. So today, this is a new CRT for me. I'm going to show you me just working through this, recording the cap kit on here. And we'll pull the caps, take a look at some, test some. We'll use some tools, have a good old time. And uh, we're going to hang out to some jazz music and some funk this afternoon. And I'm, of course, here in the lovely CRT bunker. And so let's go ahead now and take a look at this lovely chassis from an overhead view. Now, this is an NTSC television. And the good thing about this set is everything's in one nice, compact uh, set here. Like, it's all one board for the most part. Of course, there's the neck board which is right here, which is one of the boards we'll be looking at. And then there's the main power or main board here. Now, if you have me seen me service uh, other CRTs, like higher end professional CRTs, you'll notice everything segmented in individual boards. But this one is more compacted into a single main board. And then of course there is the neck board because you need a way to communicate with your tube and give it commands and that's done through the neck board and so all, everything else is isolated to this single board if we look at this area in the lower right hand corner this is going to be obviously the flyback transformer but this is going to be our areas of deflection around this area pretty much from this point down over till maybe we get to like this heat sink, which I'll move the anode cap cable so you can see that where my finger's poking right here. There's a, a white line that intersects right in this point along the board. I'll zoom in so you can see that a little bit better, but that uh, will cut off the areas that we're concerned with pretty much. So if I show you, let me get down here a little closer to the board and show you um, a, a better angle while I'm just looking at this. This uh, chassis uh, has the inputs, which is, this is like the rear of the set when you're looking at the television. So this is like our input area 
right? These are our inputs that we have on our input board. And then this is our tuner. And if we look at this section, okay, this section is not in our capacitor kit. And I'm going to tell you why. If we go to the left of this heat sink, unless we have a specific issue, uh, these capacitors should still be okay. They're not in a high heat area and they're for like the AV switching. So they're not uh, getting high voltage ever really. And there's not a lot of heat generated in. Now there is some heat around this chip, but this, this is a completely other block too. That is our sound block. And it does not age like the deflection block. So I'm just trying to show you some other things up here. Up in this section is the front input on the set. And then we have a bunch of smaller capacitors. Again, where we can see it's been labeled on the circuit board. This is our stereo audio section. If we look over here, this is our communication, our MICOM area, our tone audio area over in here. And all these things, this is our comb filter down in here. So these, these caps, unless you have an issue, these, these are not going to be part of like the cap kit, unless you're just going in and recapping the entire set. We're not going to concern ourselves with those secondary caps because those caps, while they are about mm, 16 to 17 years old, they're not again in a high heat area. And since they're not in a high heat area and there's not a lot of demand and a lot, a lot of voltage on them, they can literally last up to 10 times longer than these other capacitors. And Toshiba on this um, chassis, we'll see if they if it's made by, if it's markered by a different company, which is possible and developed by them, but I've not noticed that yet. Uh, if we look at this chassis, we can see that they've actually used some good capacitors on it. They're like, um, some of them are Rubicon, most of them are Rubicon, actually, maybe all of them. And that is, a good thing so these in these lower demand areas unless you have a specific problem with one of these features on your set you know that's just not the part that we're really worried about the parts that we are worried about we can follow along up here if we see where up in the right hand corner where we have the missing section okay that's where we're gonna start where it says 3 amps 125 volts at the pin tip here so everything like um, following this line where this connection is, there's no capacitors over here, but we'll go and kind of go down here where this transformer is and the line continues down this way and follows down all the way to this point and then off the board kind of around this area. So we want to try to concentrate on these caps on that side of the board because this top section with the transformer up here and these filter caps and um, this other transformer and the fuse this is all our power block so normally this would be in its own board on a higher end CRT sometimes even on a low end CRT these power blocks will be isolated on their own board but in this setup we have them all together So we're going to uh, do a, a cap kit on this power area and then the other cap kit will be the deflection area. And if we look down here, it will be marked with, for example, here's horizontal out. See, that's a deflection um, point vertical out, which is, it's harder to see. It's under there. See where my pin is. It says V out. That's something we're definitely going to be concerned with. And really any of these capacitors that are in this area. Now, if they're, if they're labeled with a five, like this one says C524, more than likely that's a deflection. Well, actually that might not be, that might be just a power capacitor. And then on this board, maybe the fours, anything with a four will be our deflection capacitor. Okay. So like, it'll be C like this one down here. I'm touching is C408. So C408 is a deflection capacitor. And like this is the deflection capacitor, uh, probably, yep, C422. 
And then if we move over to the power area, like this one is in the power area, it's five, two, four. So those will begin with a five. So um, I say we can start from the top and work our way back here. And the way I'm just going to do this is I'm gonna pull these caps. I've got my Hacko. FR301 here that I've shown in the last couple of videos. I'm going to I'm going to turn it on, let it heat up. Make sure my temperature's not too high on there. And as that heats up, give it a little test. As that heats up and gets ready, we will get things ready uh to record the cap kit. Now I was going to try to have another camera angle or showing you the desktop and actually just type this in, but uh, Windows 11 has been giving me so many fits lately that I decided I'm gonna do it the old-fashioned way, write it down by hand, and then I'll go back later on my Windows 10 machine and actually uh, do the cap kit documentation over on that so I can, I can make a drive document for that. All right, let's get back to the chassis here. And we'll start up here. If we look at this set, and if you're just starting with the top, we've got our fuse right here. So maybe we can zoom in a little bit more if that's possible, get a little closer for you. And go ahead and look in here and see. So we're definitely gonna be, there's no really capacitors. There's no capacitors up in this zone. And then if I look over here, the first capacitor is C507, which is this big filter capacitor. So if I get my pen out, I'll write down the value of C507. And this is a 820 microfarad 200 volt. Look at this one. That's kind of a, a big capacitor right here. This is, again, 820 microfarad and 200 volts. Now, normally when I look at these larger capacitors, I don't automatically change them because these can last a really long time. And... Um, and so normally I don't change these unless the set's really old and there's definitely a problem. Now guys, just give me one second. I got to send a quick message and then we're going to get this uh, recorded and going. All right. All right. Thank you for that quick second here. We're going to get started. Just got to make sure that if somebody shows up to the house, they know I am here and what's going on. So we're looking at C507, a big old capacitor. And um, sorry. Yeah. If you guys want to ask a question, that's fine. Uh, it's no problem. People can help you out in the chat for now. I'm going to keep working. If you want to hang out to the end, I'll have a time to dedicate to discussing things. So let's try to read this capacitor with our GME capacitor reader. And we're going to take a reading on this capacitor and see see what we get here because if it's reading really really low on the ohms then we may just not really worry about it see this is the normal normally what happens with these large capacitors it is 0.1 ohms and that's after it had been running for a while like I let this thing run for about an hour before I took it apart and brought it down here to service so I was just putting the 
positive lead on there and then the negative lead on the other side of the capacitor and then the reading for this capacitor is all the way down here in 0.1 ESR. If it was anything over that, I'd be uh, maybe a little concerned, concerned enough to swap it out. But since it's such an odd capacitor, it's a large filter capacitor, the odds are that that one's perfectly fine. And if I changed it, I wouldn't be changing it to anything that would be much of an improvement more than likely on that particular capacitor so let's move on now we've checked that one um let's go down here we've got this little one and i can't tell see there's sometimes you run into a cap like this where it's marked with a c524 and a c509 now there is a little if you look down here fives there's two capacitors here you have to make sure you're writing the right one because there's a uh, two numbers, but one above this and one below it. For this particular board, it's the number above it because the other one is for this um, cylinder capacitor, disc capacitor here. That's the other C. So this one is C509. And I am having a hard time of seeing what this capacitor is. And when that happens, that's generally when I go in and I just go ahead and remove the capacitor. One thing I did notice about this Toshiba board is things are not marked like clearly. Like there's lots on this, this backside, there's a lot of things that are not marked. Um, it's not like you can tell exactly what you're desoldering easy. And that's not a good thing. So this is right below. See, there's like a cluster of components down here, but there's no markings as to what they are. <laughs> so it's a, I got to make sure I grab the right one. It's over. There's a break. And then this is it. So that looks like a capacitor. We'll remove that because that one's definitely coming no matter what, whether it's reading good or bad. And another issue on this board may just be the solder it looks pretty bad too it's not like the best <laughs> pastor looks good and loose right there i don't know if you could see me you can kind of see it wiggling in the middle of the screen let's get pulled and see what it is okay I guess I'll show, also see how they're marked. There's a positive and negative on the board. I wasn't able to see that. So this is a 25 volt, 47 microfarad capacitor. So that will be absolutely in the kit. If you can, the light's too bright, but 25 volt, 47. Microfarads. Okay one down hello von creeper thanks for joining us from argentina hello jordan c hello abe's games and skate it's good to see everybody in there today and coming in late we're just working on a chassis for or a circuit board that's the main circuit board inside the Toshiba flat screen crt television and this is servicing it we're going through removing caps and um, servicing it by making a custom cap kit for it. And the first part is to develop that cap kit. Now, this is another large one in our power area. That's this one. It is a, let me see what the value, are, value is on here. 160 volts. Just 220. 220 microfarads. So that's going to be like, I'm guessing this one right here. Yep. That's this big capacitor right here. So since it's right there, let's give the old meter a check again. This is one of the other big filter capacitors. I may consider changing this if it reads anything over 0.1. Sorry, my hand was in the way. Just watch it. You see that red light up down there? It's it's point one, so it's it's a good one. 
So I'm not... I'm not going to change that one. It's 105 degree, and it's a Rubicon. It's reading really good. Pointless to change it. So we're going to leave these two for sure. I'll put X's on them, just because they were checked out. But I will record their value in case anybody else wants to come through and if theirs is bad or they want to go ahead and um, change it, then, then I'll put these in there. But I'm going to put an asterisk next to them. So that's a 160, 220, 220 microfarads. 160 volts. All right, I'm glad everybody likes to see more consumer sets. Hey, Yura, thanks for jumping in. Oh yeah, the Toshibas are fun. They're good sets. I've had one for a very long time. I still have one of the curved bubble screens. I think it's 32 inches. It's in my main living room, funny enough. All right, so there we have those three. The next, everything else in here we're gonna change out. The only other cap that's in this area that I probably won't change out is another big cap down here. More than likely, we're gonna take a look at this, test it, and it will show fine. Because um, it is really weird. It is 50 volt, 6.8 microfarads. That, if that rail reads a zero, then that's a super odd capacitor. Uh, let's see, where is that one? Right next to that heat sink. And, yep, it's... Yeah, that's the right side. It's reading... It's definitely reading point one, so we're not going to worry about changing it either. It's not going to be in the set. It's odd. It's huge for 6.8 microfarads, meaning it, it could last another 20 years. So that one's not going to be in the kit. That's actually part of the, this is, what we're working on first is the power board section. But we've tested that one so we don't have to worry about it. Okay. Now we are going to remove these down here, which are different values. We're going to get these two changed. This is a 500 will change. Uh, well, so we're going to change these three and this one. So let's start with this one. This is C. The one right here is C550, and it is a 16-volt, 1,000 microfarad capacitor. So that one will come out. Right next to that is, which one is that? I think it's C501, but I want to make sure I get the right one. I think it's C501 right here. And that is a 35 volt 1000. And then right next to that is a 16 volt. I can't tell the exact number. I believe it's 527, but 521 was the one we just checked. So it's, there's also a 504 above it though. Hmm. This is where you get confused a little bit. It's probably 504. Or it's 542. Look at this. This one. If I look at this capacitor right here, there's a C right here, C right here, and C right here under it. And on the left side. it's That's insane. And then there's nothing on the bottom. Man. I don't even know what to call that so that I don't forget. I hate that. So I just said this was 501, 550. All right, I guess we're going to just call it 504. Shiba wasn't doing us any favors when they were marking this board. I might come after I... Uh, Remove these and make little arrows, probably pointing to which capacitor I've referred these to. 
you know? It's very difficult to see. Let me see if I can show you. Maybe if I get close down here and turn the light out, you can tell what I'm looking at. But I'm looking at these caps down here, and just all around them are different C527, C504, C542, C516. <laughs> <laughs> thank you and then we have this little one which again i don't know what it is it looks like the the one it could be is c542 but man that's kind of far away it looks like that's unpopulated all right so let's say this is c504 and the last one was c527 instead of 504 So we'll pull these out and then um, the last one, I can't really tell what that is. It's kind of small. So we'll have to pull that one. Let's just go ahead and pull it first. If we can find it. There it is. It's right under. It's this one right here. Should be. Yeah, it's moving. Solder is just, I mean, really hideous. It's got like some pretty nasty oxidation going on on top of it. The set was very clean. So this could be a situation where we end up finding that the caps might not be the issue. That it might just be the uh, solder itself at the end of the day. Hey, Tony Escobar, the surgeon. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. Thank you for being here. All right. Yeah. So we're looking at the Toshiba. Yeah. See, this is so, and this is uh, a 50 volt 2.2. And we're going to remove these three un around it that are larger now. Should be a little little bit easier to get out of here than the other ones. That's just some nasty solder. Nasty solder. This is the kind of solder you wouldn't even really want to reflow. Like, and arcade guys know about that. Sometimes you just have to remove all the solder. It's just ridiculous. 35 volt. So this should be 501. So I'm gonna draw a line from 501 to there. And that's 504. I think I can remember that. Yeah, okay. I just marked the one. I should be okay. 550. Get rid of this one up here. It's a little bit smaller. 16 volt 1000. Oof. See, so you don't. It's weird. It doesn't. If it was good solder, it would just molten still. And look good, but I don't know the the. I think there was a note on the circuit board. We'll look for it. I may have been mistaken, but it might have said lead free. So if that's the case, that would make some sense. Where it had like lead free solder, and the solder just doesn't look as good after 20 years. C550, 16 volt, 1000. Good stuff. Excellent. So we've got, get, we're making some prog progress. We're going to go now to the C527, which is this one right here. And we're 
slowly making it through this power block. <laughs> Master Safer, hey, yeah, absolutely I have that happen. I have had white residue appear all over the boards after brushing with IPA. It's just the uh, evaporating IPA mixing with some dust that's just still left on the board so you can keep cleaning it. That's why if you notice when I did the restorations I come back with a brush that's non-conductive and brush the boards off because it brushes after it dries you can generally brush a lot of that off and not have to keep cleaning it. Uh, but that's something that um, you can either keep cleaning the board with alcohol or try the brush method. And then make sure you're using at least over 90% alcohol. All right, 16 volt 220. That's C527 right over here. And that may be another one. I'll just add a line too so that I know when I'm installing because I probably am going to have to, actually I do know, I'm going to have to order these capacitors. A lot of these are not going to be standard, I bet. I don't know that I have. I may have a... Actually, I think I have a 25 volt 220, 2200 I keep in stock. I'll probably upgrade these parts and then just use what I have if I do have it available. The next one is C539, which is a smaller one right next to a large diode. So let's record C539. And we're just going to remove this and see what it actually is. Next to the large diode leg, which should be this, maybe. <coughs> yep, good, we got it. Alright, we're getting that. So guys, if you're gonna be... I haven't decided yet. I've been talking with good buddy 8-Bit Esquire today um, about possibly doing a stream later tonight. So if you have nothing to do later on this evening, whoops, come back to the channel or put your alerts on the channel and see if you come back for that stream. It'll be more relaxed. We're going to well, we're going to try to troubleshoot a 50 or a 20, 14 inch PVM M series that he has uh, sent me. So if you got anything going on later, cancel it and come hang out with Retro Tech and the 8 bit Esquire. All right, this is a 50 volt 4.7 microfarad capacitor. Out of there. On to the next one. And if I look here, look at this. This is great. We are moving on, I think. I think that's all for our power capacitors. This thing in total has eight power capacitors, really? Ah, I found one more, actually. Sorry about that. We're gonna change it. Well, okay. I don't know. Boy, we're definitely changing this one. I don't, I mean, it's part of the MyCom, but it is next to the power block, and I don't like the way it looks. It's C110. So I'm going to kind of put it over on its own. That's why it's always good to get in here and, spe and inspect your board. It's like, it's a low voltage, 6.3 volt, but it has a high capacitance, like, and I don't, oops, I don't like those kind of caps to stay good. It might be a little bit convex also, it's hard to tell, but I'm feeling maybe there's a little bit of wear and tear on this one. That's out. Yeah, 6.3 volt. 200 or 2200 microfarads. Let's put that down here. Let's just see this, what this looks like. 
Oh, look at me, a big worrisome wart. It's all the way down there in the good section. So since I'm ordering this cap kit, I'm gonna go ahead and change it, but um, probably leave it off the cap kit officially. So I'll put a mark next to it where it also, since it's just a 100 and I thought it looked bad, even though it tested good. And we can move over here. Let's see, it's a four, four. All the rest of them that we're looking at are fours, I believe, where they should be. Yes, and this isn't a huge cap kit at all. Thankfully, we're gonna get pretty fortunate here. So now we're gonna move over into the section down here where my hand is and pull these C400s. So flip this from ESU cap kit. And so far we're at about nine capacitors on this whole cap kit. But there's gonna be at least that many in the geometry section. And the geometries are all C4s. So if we look at C4, we'll see all that. All right. Doing good, doing good. Just doing a systems check real quick there. Making sure everything's still working. So, I I'm pretty impressed from looking at some things on this board. Again, the fact that they would use um, Rubicon caps for the 95% of this is a good thing. The fact that a lot of these caps are 105 volts is a good thing. But as I told you a little bit ago, this is the thing I don't like. And that's the reason I think this solder just looks bad. Check it out. This is what I, t what I noticed. Check that out right there. I've never seen that on a chassis before. It says PB free. My assumption would be that this was a chassis that uh, Toshiba would have marketed as, may, as being lead free. That's why PB free is there. And I believe that maybe the reason that the solder on here is just so dull. So dull. Now, the first area is is that we've just gone through that we've removed the caps from is our power area. So if you have a power issue with your set or um, a throbbing or anything that may be related to power, you should try and check those capacitors. The diodes, there are a few diodes in here. You can check these diodes if you have a problem and then check your solder and hopefully that will solve your power issue. And you can always check your fuse down here. You always should check your fuse, okay? So that's kind of like a power if you had a power issue. But if you have an issue with your screen uh, on like the overall performance of the screen, geometry wise or anything like that, that's gonna be in this 400 block we're working on now for geometry. So if you have any, any issues with picture quality, I would, recommend trying this cap kit that we're going to start to work on right now um, because it may solve your issues it's not guaranteed to but it's going to give you a good good chance first up we have c403 under a transformer and so i've got to flip it and find it and that's i believe this little point right here And for this board, even though we're using this lead, we're working with this lead free solder for the moment. Um, I'm using the 301 on its lowest temperature setting, but it's not doing a great job. Like this whole trace right here is not looking good. Come on. Ah. 
Yeah, it's not great. It's not coming out great. Let's see what this cap is. I'd never recommend... I mean, unless you have a certain situation where you're not allowed to have lead, you should be using some lead in your solder. The solder I use will have lead in it a little bit. This is a 50 volt, 22 microfarad. So that's C403, our first capacitor for the... For the geometry. I'm just inspecting it down there. Yeah, it's just crusty. It doesn't want to come off right in there. It is. There's there's a big old chunk of that unleaded mess right there. Okay. Well, I'm gonna have to take a second and check out what this is actually doing to my FR301. Because it sounds like it's clogging it, clogging it up more than it should be. in an attempt to pretend to make a CRT health conscious, right? By using lead-free solder. Yes, I think we broke through. I think so. Let's make sure. Hey, Seb. Welcome in from Australia. That's very cool. People all over the world coming in to coming in to see the CRT game. Thank you for being here. Should be all I need to do is just get that chamber cleared out a little bit. Obviously, the tip is super hot. Golly, still got something down in there. I can't get that. There. See that? There we go. That should be good. All right, hopefully that will help get the rest of the capacitors out. And I do apologize. It sounds like one of my neighbors is chopping down a tree. I can hear it. So probably you'll be able to hear it. I do have a muffler on my, or a sound dampener on my microphone, but that doesn't always guarantee everything. Next, we're going to move on to C406. Gosh, I can't tell. 406. I'm going to say it's on the other side of this transformer down here. 406. is just this is not this solder is such trash <laughs> like I can't I can't I can't deal with it I can't deal with it I'm gonna have to reflow I'm gonna have to reflow the solder on this board like just to get these caps out this is the frustrating thing guys like one of the parts, like, you would think it would be easier to work on these freaking uh, consumer sets because they're simpler. But the problem is, when you have cute things like, oh, we're going to put no lead in our solder, and then you realize that you're just, ugh. Like, for me, this is difficult. Imagine if somebody didn't have a lot of experience with this stuff. It's not, it's not fun. But that cleaned it up. I mean, it's clean now. And so now we have C. No, well, this wasn't the one I was thinking I was taking out. This is actually the one next to it. Four. I'm going to call this one. C407. 
I'll have to put another marker next to that. And this one is a 35 volt 100. So there's one more down. Let's get four zero, the one right next to it, 406. Which is right up in this area. Sorry guys, this is such bad solder I can't even... Can't even do anything but just I have to concentrate fully on this. Alright, four, I think it's 406 or 408, I can't tell fully, 406, pull it and see what it is, hey, Vinicius from Brazil, good to see you, um, this is a 50 volt one microfarad, <laughs> Welcome back, PO17. We've got some of the caps out here. We're working our way through. I think the next one is going to be labeled 408. Yeah, 408. It's a bigger one. It's this one over here. Down in this area, we're going to remove it. And we'll see what we've got here. This one is a 25 volt 1000. It's a pretty common capacitor in a chassis like this to have a couple, one or two of these 25 volt 1000s. And once I get some of these, the rest of these pulled, we're going to test some of them. Hopefully some of them read bad. I do see possibility of some residue left over, but you can never really tell whether that's from the capacitor or just the board itself, possibly leaving behind a little flux residue from its original fabrication. Now we'll move on to this cap, which is over next to the heat sink where my index finger is touching at the moment. That's C409. And I'm not quite sure. This might be one of the ones where I go in and I reflow the solder on it ahead of time because it looks pretty dodgy. It's a smaller one. And I might have to just go in and to clean a lot of these things, reflow the solder and remove it again. I see it's... That's not it. Where are you? Right there. There you are. Oof, that stuff smells terrible when you like mix it. It's like a science experiment gone bad mixing that solder together. Yuck. <laughs> That one out now. 409. 409, right? Yep, 409. 50 volt 10. And see, we've gotten all these out now. We tested that big one. The only things left is like there's two medium sized caps right here. Two big caps here. We're definitely changing these two. They look old. 
And that's about it. Four more caps on here. And then we'll move on to the last board we'll do, which is the neck board. We always do the neck board also. Four three zero. Sorry about that. C four one zero. Hey, self elected. Thank you. Fresh flux. I don't know. I mean, fresh fluxing. I don't know what you would mean by doing that. You might. You might add, I mean, you could add flux to it and then just re reflow the regular solder, I guess. But the problem here is just the chemistry on this old lead, if it, it, which I, again, completely think it is, is just gross. This old lead free solder. But adding the fresh solder, that always makes it easier when you're removing capacitors. That's definitely true. So there, that one came out. That is a... What is this one? 100 volt 22. That's an interesting one. Hundred volt twenty two. Make sure it's not two point two twenty two for sure. And that's C four thirty, yes. Now on to four ten. Which is under this inductor, in between those two inductors, actually. It's definitely a horizontal capacitor right in there. And that has extra solder on it, so let's see if we can get it out with just the original. But, ugh, so gross. I mean, I, I don't know, um, I know that like some, unless, again, unless it's some really specific need, you really should have some kind of lead content in your solder. Uh, even like, I know that like in, for example, in the United States, there's even requirements for uh, people to use leaded solder on certain, most electronics um, when they're being serviced and things. 250 volt. 2.2 microfarad. It's not like paint where you could, you know, switch over to latex paint and there's no argument <laughs> against it. <laughs> like nobody needs leaded paint in anything anymore. I mean, I don't believe so. There may be some kind of situation where on some kind of submarine or something where you need leaded paint but most of the time, not any longer. All right, we've got C413 up here, it looks like. That's what we're gonna take now. Yes, this video, this one does have S video. It has S video, it has the color stream, so that's Toshiba's early version of component video. All right. 30 volt, 35 volt, 1000 there. Mark that down. Put it aside, which one was that one? That one was C413. And we can now take C, this is the C426. 
Um, and yeah, if you guys like Toshiba's, I actually have another Patreon member I talked to today. He's bringing in two 14 inch Toshiba's that are having issues like this. Um, so they are going to get the same kind of treatment. Uh, we'll get the cap kit made for those and I'll probably do it live if I can, you know, it'll be, it's not this upcoming weekend. It'll be next weekend. And so early half of May, look for some more Toshiba stuff. I mean, I'll have a whole bunch of Toshiba stuff actually. It'll be Toshiba. The summer of Toshiba. I thought it would be the fall of Toshiba last year and I never got around to it. And I mean, fall is in the season, not like fall of the company or something. 22 UF, 22 microfarad, 250 volt on this capacitor here. And I'm just inspecting what I've got left. And you, like I said, you could justify changing everything. If this was like your main set and you just wanted to recap everything, you could do that, but let's be honest. It's not like you're going to see an improvement off of new caps in this area if there's nothing wrong with them. So, as I said before, we're concentrating on power and deflection. And I don't see any more there, so that's it for deflection. We're just at two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's only nine deflection caps. Only nine. Wow. Okay, so that moves us, and, and this is going to be something that's unusual because most of the time the neck boards only have, like on a PVM, average neck board would have less than five capacitors, but on the neck board for this Toshiba, we've got three, six, seven. That's kind of a lot for a neck board, especially when the other cap kit, cap kits are only like six and eight. Look at this. Yep, there's another one of those, that moniker right there. Lead free. So, that was the goal. Let's get... So now we've got our geometry... Geometry kit, kit spelled out, our power supply kit, and now... We'll move on... To this but if you guys like samsung stuff just know or i'm sorry not samsung someone just said po17 said samsung uh he was asking about samsung stuff and i had samsung on my tongue so i let that slip eight goodness here's some more multi eight six three Right here, Let's see, 864 right above it, and 862. So let's move on. This one is a, we can actually see these 160 volt 10 for the 864. One hundred sixty volt ten for the eight sixty three. It's a sixteen volt forty seven. I'll probably go up on that. That's that's a pretty low cap. Sixteen volt forty seven also for five fifty or eight fifty two. Okay, so it's those three, and we have a three over here which are. Oh man, let's just remove these. We'll move on to those. Then we'll move on. Oh, this solder just looks terrible. When I get the cap kit in, I'm gonna have to reflow solder on a lot of this. So you're blessed with having not a lot of caps to replace, but a lot of slaughtered solder to replace, which kind of lame. Still. Uh, 
16 volt 47 gone. These should, this one shouldn't be so bad. It's got more solder on it than the last. Well, I say that. of this is the one I thought looked good it's not wanting to melt or anything <laughs> it's like they suck in some snuck in some super solder here somehow oh man that's not that's not doing anything that's not doing anything that's not cool yuck Yuck, yuck, yuck. So this is definitely 864. That was 863, 16 volt 40. Because now I can actually see on this board has markings for each capacitor on the back end. Unlike... Unlike the primary board, for some reason they didn't want to mark it with the right things. 160 volt 10 and then this should be another 1647 right in here 852 I'm just gonna lift those legs off the board and that's just hideous that solder I hate it gross <laughs> lead free super solder that's what it is uh yeah pass was asking about height and spacing you can check that out you know with calipers and i've done that sometimes just most of the time nowadays these caps have changed sizes so unless it's really Unless it's really a tight fit, where I know it's going to be like a, a vertical problem or a, like, I don't want to really wide. I do have to consider that sometimes, but when there's a lot of space, for example, on these generic, look how much room there is in here. You could really fit any size capacitor just about in there. So the capacitor size isn't, um, isn't something I normally am going to be concerned with on a, on a project like this. Because oftentimes you won't be able to match the size anyway. These caps are older, and one of the things that happens as caps progress in technology, most of the time, is they get smaller. Um, notice that a lot of caps. Uh, 863 is our next. No, that's the last this one. Was eight, 853. I was about to say. You can't, you can't fool me with saying they're both 863s. Now I've done, if you do P, like BVM cards, where you're concerned with cap spacing, cap size, that, that's when you can get into that kind of stuff. Also, it's something that when we're having part problems like supply chain issues, it's, it, that's more of a luxury. Sometimes you just have to take whatever you can get. Or a cap replace a replacement cap. Gotta miss the solder. Just rubbish. Like I'd do better just pulling this with my uh, soldering iron. <laughs> But these caps are starting to stink, so that's a good sign. Starting to smell that familiar fish feeling smell. Fishy smell. 16 volt. 47. 
is a... What is that one? 160 volt 10. So it just doesn't want to <laughs> melt. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Wretched. What a wretched, wretched idea. Lead free solder. There's good ideas and then there's lead free solder. Now, if you're worried, you know, sometimes you could want to add, mm, so like if, depending on the capacitor, you know, if it's, if it's something in a high heat area, you could try to get a larger cap too, right? If you wanted, like in a size comparison, because a larger cap is going to have a larger area to dissipate the heat, but at the same time, you don't want to make it too big where it's jamming other parts around and not fitting well. And we're only we're down to our last two capacitors in this kit. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. And then we can just relax and test these things. Alright. I don't know why I'm doing this to myself. I should have just reflowed the song. some kind of design issue here with these because the, these caps are way too tiny for a a pad of this nature and size all that size area imprint for this tiny 16 volt 47 you know C866, 16 volt, 47. Mm -hmm. It just feels so stiff. I don't think I'm going to hurt myself this time. I'm going to wait and do it. I know, you know, you always wait till the very last capacitor to do it the right way. Because this is going to be the big shot, right? This is the one that will be the important one for the video. The very last one. Okie dokie. Yeah, if you guys are building any cap kits, this is a 250 volt 4.7, sorry. I was looking at the comments, C809, 250 volt 4.7. Yeah, if you guys are building a cap kit, I always recommend that you don't just go by whatever the cap list says, because there are variants to... to PCBs and you might have a cap that's not in there that's you need to add or it might have one too many caps that happens all the time and I can't account for everything on there but 
that guide or these lists are a good guide to go by. You may end up, you know, 95% of the time with the same exact board build out, and then you can just use it. But otherwise, you should still kind of do what we did here. Take your cab kit, pull each cap, make sure it matches what's on the list. If it's different than on the list, uh, there could be a reason. Uh, some of these things have been altered, especially in Sony PVMs. But if it's in a standard, standard set like this, it, it's not altered usually. So um, those are just some tips. You know, just make it. A lot of times you don't have to, there will be, on the 2950, you may have to worry about size for some of them. You can't usually get, some big caps will need to, will be too fat. Yeah, this solder is just hideous on here. Wow. Okay. So that's all our cap kits done. Let's, let's pick a, a step back and see what we've got so far. Got that. Uh, this is our neck board. Let me write that down here. Neck board. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven caps on the neck board. Nine in geometry, 16 total, and then another eight, nine here. It's 25 total caps in this. And there'll probably be only like 23 in the actual kit that you have to be concerned with if there's nothing wrong with your set to begin with. So, what does that really mean? Well, it means the issues from this set were either from bad capacitors or, more than likely, bad solder. So, we can turn off our solder tools and our desoldering equipment, and we can check the capacitors to see what our readings are on those and make sure that, that they pass and that they're, or I'm sorry, if they're bad, we'll know, we'll know that they're bad and that will be a good thing. Let me move our circuit board out of the way. And we'll just leave the te testing tools. And uh, we'll check out some readings that we can get on our capacitors here. And we are coming on just over an hour now in stream. So again, if you're gonna be here later on tonight, later on looking for something to watch, we could possibly be looking at another stream tonight with my friend Roger. That will be later on after bedtime. So put the kids to bed, come hang out. If we end up doing it, I'm not promising yet. I am not promising anything. Because kids still got to come home from school. They could have been bad today for all I know. Alright, this is a 6.3 volt 2200 microfarad capacitor. Let me pull the test tester over. Maybe if I just pull the tester and put it under there like that. That'll look, that looks like a pretty good view. And then we will test it. Good. It's good. I'm just gonna go with the bigger ones first. This is a 35 volt, 1000 microfarad. Good. Sixteen volt, two twenty two hundred. Nice and low. And that's the reason a lot of these bigger caps, they stay around in these caps, these kits longer. They they don't they don't wear out. 1000 UF was the last one we just tested. You'll notice all these are coming back really low. 0.1 ohms. 1000, again, these are all 1000s and they're all coming back. 0.1 on the reading. This is a 22 microfarads. It might be higher, but still, it's well into the good range. 
This is a 10 microfarad, so... Whoops. That one did have a higher reading, you'll see. And that's generally why you change out these smaller ones. But still, 1.5 for 10, that's at the high end of the green, so technically good. Technically good. This is a 10 microfarad. 1.5 for 10, technically good, but we're getting on the higher end of green, but still good. We've got a little one here. This is a 100 microfarad. And that is getting up there to 0.8, almost 0.9 ohms. That one's getting in the yellow, high yellow. So there you go. There's something that's reading high. Not dead, though. 22 microfarads up there to two points. That's in the yellow. So that's definitely suspect. Here we've got 4.7 at a two. And that's still green but could be lower. Now we're gonna look at a 2.2. 2.0 on a 2.2 is green, that's probably fine. Now we've got the one microfarad. We got a 3.5 for the one microfarad. That is almost to the yellow, but not quite. So a lot of these are pushing, pushing up that scale. We got a 47 here that's reading two. That's a r yellow. That's definitely suspect. A 47 that would read that high. And then 100. We got a 0.7 for 100. That's borderline. Borderline close to bad. Not quite though. Oh, look at this one. This is a 4.7, but it's only reading. Uh, in the high green. 10 microfarads. That's in the yellow. I still, we still haven't found one that's like, that's, that's reading bad really. 2.2, here we go. Gosh, that's close. I mean, we've got a couple that are like high. That 2.2 is 8 ohms. That's, although that's a low microfarad capacitor, that's a really high reading. That's pretty nasty. This is a 47, still in the green. These are those 47s from the neck board. That's what these are, still in the green. And finally, all these neck boards. I got one more down in this tray. Wow, last one. No, still, still not bad. So there's probably a couple on here that would definitely need to be changed. And then about half of them, about half of them are still good. And then half of them are, or, you know, the other majority of them are in the suspects. So they're, they're time to change, especially, especially when it comes to something vital on the CRT, like the power board or neck board or deflection areas because those are the areas that have the most wear and tear done to them. All right, everybody, it's been an hour and 20 minutes and uh, getting close to early afternoon here. If there's any questions about anything we've gone over so far, I'd be glad to take a second to address those and, um, For the next plan going forward, I am going to type this kit up, type it all up, and then I will make an order sheet uh, and order a test kit based on what I would order, and then I will install the kit. I might even do that part on another stream. I'm not really sure because I do want to rework a lot of that solder. And so maybe that's what we'll do on the next live stream for this project is we'll install the caps and rework a lot of that bad solder. And uh, then I could take it upstairs and test it because this is a big TV. So I didn't want to bring it downstairs. The tube's too big. So it's upstairs in the loading area. And um, that's why I'm going to do a full episode on this. So you'll get to see what happens at the end of it and how it looks. I'll show all the inputs on it and how those work and look. 
Uh, but that's it. Oh yeah, sorry, Yura. I think I did see that question. Um, it was about the FW nine hundred restoration. I don't. Uh, I don't know. That's that's kind of an awaiting thing right now. I've got to get my. Honestly, I need to get some more work done to my tube tester, and then I can test the tube. But I believe either the tube is bad, or there is a IC on the neck board of that set that is proprietary, and it's so it's not like a normal transistor on a neck board. It's like a multi-transistor in one chip that does a thousand things. So I haven't been able to find a replacement of that chip, because I think that chip might be bad, but how can you even tell if that chip is bad? It's hard to tell. Uh, Gimlot asks, out of curiosity, is there common capacitor values you keep in stock? Yes. And it's most of the ones you saw. But I, what I do, for example, is I consolidate some of this. So my stocks are going to be between... I don't tend to keep a lot of 16-volt capacitors in stock. I generally keep like 25, 50-volt capacitors. And then some of the higher-end or higher-voltage ones, too. But yeah, like 50 volts, you go in and make a 50 volt stock kit and you go 50 volt. All right, I need a bunch of 0.47 microfarads. I need a bunch of one microfarads. I need a bunch of 2.2, 3.3, 4.7, 10. And then you jump up from there to 47. You might even get some 22s and 33s. You basically just go through the whole thing because you'll need them and they're cheap. Uh, so yeah. How are the dogs? They're great. They're up getting walked right now by my wife who's upstairs walking home from her lunch break, I think. Hey, thanks, Jonathan. Thank you for being here. All right, Weirdocity. Good luck. I'm working on the same set. Yep, Troy. Uh, no, this one doesn't have a distorted dark side, but that's probably something to do with the magnetism in the set. Maybe the um, yoke has shifted a little bit. McMuffin, McMuffin, I will warn you guys, this set did not have a resistor like a lot of the Sonys have had. Uh, did not have a self-discharging resistor. I don't know if I got it on film. I was holding the camera with one hand and discharging the set. But I could literally hear, when I pulled the cap off before discharging it, I could literally hear the, like, the electricity still generated off the little metal. It was amazing. It's been a long time since I've seen that. So if you're working, um, if you're working on this set, know that you need to be careful. There's no discharge. There's no auto discharge on it. All right, David R asked, where do you purchase your caps? Um, there's no place really to get a good cap kit pre-made on a CRT because values on caps. If you make like a cap kit shop shopping cart. A lot of the times, a cap will go out of stock and not come back in stock for years. So that's the reason I try to provide a list like this. So you could take a list like this and go to like Mauser.com or DigiKey. Those are the two big providers in my area. But you need to check which major parts supplier provides parts to your area at a good price. And then, see, the good thing about it is, you know, it does take time to go in there and, and make these cap kits. Um, on your own but you have the list and if you make the cap kit on your own and order the parts from the supplier you're gonna pay like generally speaking less than 20 30 dollars for all the caps uh, very good uh, deals all right thanks scott scott review says it was a chill stream thank you for doing the podcast too yeah we love it still doing a lot of things people ask does my crt net recap cameron let me see here what you're asking. People as always ask, does my CRT need a recap? Do you have any advice, symptoms that could present themselves? Yeah, so if there's any kind of like screen glitches or like edge movement, those are kind of good signs that the caps are going bad. The thing is, we're looking at machines that are all past the technical lifespan of the capacitor like even these good capacitors are technically beyond their exp life expectancy so we're at a point now where a lot of these recaps are preventative maintenance right because it's it's much easier to go in and recap a set and do it properly 
and then you just use the set and most of the time you don't have an issue but if you wait till an issue shows up it's much harder to figure out what failed and then you could go in and recap the whole set and possibly fix the issue but not always but if you've already had the cat issue you know the set recapped it's probably not a cap or it could be a bad cap and you notice that Great, I'm glad the answers are helping. Um, let me see. I think there was one more. Can UV sunlight damage the phosphor layer on the screen? I don't know that answer. I don't believe it does, but I, I'm sorry. I, I don't have a scientific enough knowledge on that. I think anything in sunlight isn't really good. I mean... I guess the best thing would be to see a CRT that's been sitting there with the sun bouncing off it all day at like a business and see if it looks any different. It could very well. Yeah, there's always the chances in these old sets. We just saw it today, a lead-free solder set. I guarantee you that this set is going to have way more trouble down the road from bad solder than the capacitors. The capacitors are Rubicons. We just tested them. Most of them tested good. Um, Usually when I recap a PVM that's like you've seen me do here, there's plenty of times where there'll be more caps than this that show up bad, but the thing never looked bad. So it's crazy. Master safe? I don't know about that. I mean, the you're going to have to try... I, I don't... Ooh. If you got fuses blowing, it's because if you have a fuse blowing in a CRT, it's because there's some problem. Or you could definitely get a controlled power supply and limit the power and voltage and everything if you want to limit the, the power going into the uh, set, like conditioner or something. But um, I don't know. Because there's like a fuse then in that device and if that fuse blows it's because you're getting a voltage surge from the outlet thanks Troy all right hey Steven good to see you well I'm sorry you got here just at the end of the stream <laughs> but that's that's just sometimes how it goes look guys this one will be up if you want to come back check it out if you missed anything you want to go back to the beginning and see this cap kit being built um, that'll be fine it'll be here and uh, again I will try to see if, if if you keep it in tabs with me on the channel or on Twitter I'll make an announcement if we end up going live later on tonight that would be more along the lines of like seven hours from now so I don't care what time zone you're in if we do that it would be around after 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's six to seven hours. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful day. I really do appreciate everybody coming here and uh, hanging out, especially, you know, every time I get a super chat too, that's awesome. I really appreciate that. But e even just coming, hanging out, watching, and, and being interactive and being cool and asking the questions is just so awesome. So um, thank you again, everybody. And I will.